Jesus. He is Emmanuel and he is God with us. I have a poem and a blessing by Joanna Foos. And this bless or this poem is Jesus every day. If we practice Jesus every way, it be like Christmas every day. If we like him were meek and mild and loved each woman, man, and child. If we read our Bible, it would remind us that every single day he will find us. More and more in sweet accord with our sweet Jesus, Master, Lord, then every day that we're alive would be like December 25. And a Christmas blessing. We thank you, Lord, for being here with us as we celebrate this cherished season. This holiday, we honor you and your precious sacred birth. We recognize and acknowledge that all of the material pleasures that we enjoy today the food, the gifts, and everything else that comes our way is from you. Lord, through your grace, your compassion, and your love for us, would you help us through the year to always strive to be worthy of the blessings that you give us, to be aware that all is from you, our family, our friends, and our comforts, by living our lives in your will, and according to your holy word. Lord, you are with us. Emmanuel, God, today and every day, we thank you that you came to earth in form of a baby and that your Holy Spirit has come and dwells among us and within us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that every day we can experience your presence and your power and your peace because you are Emmanuel, you are God with us. May you bless each person here, every family that they represent. In Jesus' name, amen. special night. If you agree with that, say amen. Amen. David, age eight, pointed out there's nothing in the Bible about Christmas cards. Now, what you don't know is David was repeating his dad as he witnessed his dad and his mom just a few weeks earlier sitting at the kitchen table with, with a table full of Christmas cards that had to be filled out and put in the mailbox. Katie, she was a perceptive little girl, age five, and she said, you know what? Turkeys hate Christmas. <laughs> I bet they do. <laughs> a little friend of hers who was into fashion, she said this, she said, as far as I'm concerned, Father Christmas wears way too much red. And a little girl called Tessa said, well, I'd like Father Christmas to take my little brother. <laughs> a sensitive young boy named Edward, age eight said, you should do something nice at Christmas for old ladies, like, like cover their legs with, rug, with a rug. And then lastly here, it'll be the last one, but Anthea, she said this, she said, I think Jesus would be upset if he knew what went on at Christmas. I'm not sure, but Anthea might have something there. Amen. Now, children are one thing, and sometimes we laugh and we chuckle at their responses to questions like that, but, but how would you as adults, how would you answer that, those, those very same couple of questions? What is the significance of Christmas? Think about that for a moment. Think about this whole month. Think about the last few days. What is the significance of Christmas to you? Why are you here this afternoon? Why did Jesus come 
Some churches, they celebrate what's called the Advent, and uh, it, it's, it's leading up to Christmas morning. Many think celebrating the Advent are just for like liturgical churches, but they're not. Many non-denominational and evangelical churches are, are beginning to implement the practice into some of their own worship services. In fact, the Advent is simply this. It's acknowledging the waiting for the Messiah, the Savior, to come into the world. And in that time of waiting, it's preparing our hearts for that very special celebration. Now, I'm not here to bring any condemnation on any of us today in this question, but I do wanna ask all of us, how have we been preparing our heart for tomorrow morning? The celebration of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I know a lot of preparations have been going on for tomorrow morning. I know that, I get that. I know a lot of money has been spent this, these last several weeks, but I, I'm asking a different question this afternoon. How have we been preparing our hearts for the celebration of our Savior, the Messiah, the Lord, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? How have we been doing that? Our Christmas theme this year has been preparing room and celebrating the, the Advent is spending time in that spiritual preparation, thinking about who Christ is and what he means to each and every one of us. And by the way, tomorrow morning, I wanna repeat what Pastor Bill said. We would love for you to join us for our Christmas service tomorrow. We have three opportunities for that, uh, for you to join us. And that's at 11, at three and at 7 p.m. And beginning at 9 a.m. on all the other odd hours, there will be something special going on on those same platforms. That's our website, that's YouTube, and that is Facebook. This Christmas Eve, I want us to look at this preparation that's going on in our hearts for tomorrow morning. And you might be saying, Pastor Tim, I gotta be honest, you know what? I, I really haven't been preparing my heart spiritually for tomorrow morning. It's okay. You can begin right now, amen? The Bible says in Romans chapter eight, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The important thing is you're here this afternoon, amen? And your attention is being beckoned by the Father himself as we get ready to celebrate the only one who could take away our sins, the only one who could change the course of our life, and the only one who could give us what we're about to take the next few minutes to talk about. Prepare him room. Father, I pray right now over the next couple of minutes that God, if we've not already begun to prepare our hearts and our minds for the celebration of you tomorrow morning, then God, I pray it starts right now. Lord God, I know it's been a busy several weeks. I know there've been a lot of things going on, family-wise, school-wise, work-wise, the list goes on and on. But Father, right now, I pray your, your presence would fill this room and God, that you would begin to prepare our hearts for the real reason of the season. The first candle that we're gonna light here in honor of the Advent, and again, churches would do this on a weekly basis, the four weeks leading up to Christmas morning. The first candle that I wanna talk about here is hope. It's also called the prophet's candle. The prophets of old, they espe especially Isaiah, they were awaiting this hope to enter the world. They were looking forward or towards the Messiah to come and to save them from their sin. They were looking for a king to come and establish his kingdom. There's more to that story. But Phillips Brooks captured the heart of Christmas with one line and one carol that we often sing, O little town of Bethlehem. This line summarizes what Christmas is truly and genuinely all about. And the line reads this, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. In the little town of Bethlehem, God brought hope to all of humanity, to all of humanity, not just to Pastor Tim Moe and not just to Pastor Tina, but to you. He brought it to all of humanity, even those who have not yet professed Jesus Christ as Lord. Jesus brought hope into the world for everyone. If you believe that, say. The good news of Christmas is that God brought hope to all people, everyone, no matter what our race is, no matter what, no matter what our background is, this hope is just for you. And 
the Jews and the Gentiles alike, we celebrate this. And in the Christmas story, the angels made a very great announcement, a bold proclamation in Luke chapter two, verses 10 and 11, where we read, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people, for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Hope is a powerful force. I don't really know how much of the world continues on a day in and day out, day out basis without hope because I don't really know where their hope lies. I know where my hope lies, amen? Hope is a powerful force and Christmas brings us genuine hope, not a false hope, not a moment's hope, but an everlasting hope that begins when we say yes to Christ and continues on until we reach that place called eternity. As a matter of fact, if you have confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then guess what? You have this genuine hope in your heart this afternoon. The second Advent candle that we would light the second week, rep, whoops, let's get that going there, represents what we call peace. Say peace. Ah, oh, something the world longs for, but yet something that a majority of the world simply does not know, peace. In the lighting of this candle, we celebrate the reconciliation of the world to God through Jesus Christ. Last week, Pastor Bill did a beautiful job preaching the word as he always did, and he made the vital point that the peace that Christ brought into the world was a peace between us and God. We often are looking for peace to stop wars and peace to stop conflict, but the greatest peace that God brought into this world was peace between you and I and God, amen? For all of us, we were, with, we were at enmity with God for our sins separated us with God. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And from the moment we took our first breath, we had that inherited sinful nature that separated us from the one who created us. But praise the Lord that he had a plan. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, into the world so that we could be reconciled with him and have peace. Say peace. Amen. If you have confessed Jesus Christ as Lord of your life this afternoon, then guess what? You have this peace in your heart. The third candle that we want to light, which would represent the third week leading into Christmas, the third Sunday, it represents joy. Joy unspeakable and full of what? to seeing how many of you were born and raised in church. <laughs> Joy unspeakable and full of glory, the old hymn said. To the shepherds, great joy, the angels, the announcement of this great joy, it meant a lot to them. For when this announcement came to the shepherds that night, that starry night, it told them that Jesus came for the humble. Jesus came for the ordinary, everyday people just like them. And I don't know about you, but when I look around the world and I look in the mirror at myself, I see an ordinary, everyday guy. And you know what? I would say that most of us in this room, when we look in the mirror, that's how we see ourselves too. We see ourselves as an ordinary, everyday person, amen? <laughs> You are special in the eyes of God. You are special to your mom and your dad. You are special to your children. But, but you know what? In reality, we're just everyday, ordinary people. And God sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world, for all the world, for ordinary, everyday people. Some of our favorite carols mention this joy that we're talking about here this afternoon. Joy to the world, for the Lord has come. Or this one, oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strings prolong? Good Christian men rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph in the skies. With all the angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Christmas is full of joy, not because your current circumstances 
our calm. And that's good news for some in here tonight because your current circumstances are not calm. But you know what? In the midst of wherever you're at in life this afternoon, you can have the joy of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because of what Christ has done for us. As a matter of fact, if you have confessed Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, then this joy is present within. The fourth, I'm, the fourth, I missed a candle here. Nope, there we go. The fourth candle leading into Christmas morning represents called the angel candle and it represents the love of God towards this world it's a love like none of us have ever known maybe you would look at your your spouse next to you and you'd say you know what I am so in love I've never been more in love or maybe some of you look at your spouse and you say well I remember a day when I would say oh I was so in love but listen this is a love like none of us have ever known And even for those of us who walk every day in a relationship with Jesus Christ, we have yet to understand the full extent of the love of God towards us. But the love that we experience, it's a love that grows day by day as we get to know him more and more as we spend time with him. For God desired to have a relationship with each and every one of us. He created us for a relationship. And when sin separated us from him, he sent his only son into the world to restore that relationship. Why? Because God loves you. It's a powerful love. Luke 2.11 says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Now this is good news. We go on in the story in John chapter one, verses 14 and 16, where we read, and the word became flesh. The word, word there is equated to Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, God became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as the one and only son from the father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, this This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. For from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. And in this grace, we begin to understand the fullness of what was said in John chapter 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whomever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Listen, if you have confessed Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, then you have the love of God all over you. I would be so bold to say you're clothed in the love of Christ if you have Jesus Christ in your heart. And lastly, it brings us to this fifth candle This fifth candle is called the Christ candle. Jesus is born on Christmas morning. You know, much of the world, they try to change Christmas. They call it the holidays. Instead of saying Merry Christmas, they wanna say Happy Holidays. But does the world ever sit and think that, well, why does this holiday exist? (laughs) Where did this holiday come from? It came from the birth of Jesus Christ. It's called Christmas. Christmas preceded happy holidays. Someone say amen. Amen. Jesus is born and he is the reason for the season. And he was the one that the prophets of old were waiting for. And he is the promise of God's love to all of the world. And you can know him. And maybe today, this afternoon, you're here as a part of, you know what? You came with your family or maybe you, it's Christmas. So it's the thing to do. But I believe for someone in this room this afternoon, God drew you here to just remind you or maybe tell you for the very first time that he loves you and he wants a relationship with you. And he wants to put his peace in your heart, his joy in your soul. He wants to blanket you with an everlasting love that you can never ever begin to fully understand until you get to heaven. Jesus is born and our season of waiting 
has come to an end. Tomorrow morning when we celebrate, we're no longer waiting for the Messiah. We're celebrating the fact that the Messiah has truly come. Amen. Hallelujah. So with the lighting of this candle right here, it's a candle that shines bright in the midst of a very dark world. It represents a light that you and I, if you have confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, then you may not know it, but you're a walking light, a lamp in this world, this dark world that illuminates the world around you as you allow that relationship with God to flow in and through your life. Some would say amen. I hope you've lived that type of year. And if not, guess what? By the grace of God, we'll have tomorrow and every day after, and we have 2023 coming. And in that year, I pray that you would begin to fully understand all that we've talked about in just these couple minutes, and that you would understand that you are a vessel of God, that he is wanting to take all of this to the world around you, simply by walking in a relationship day by day with him, amen? So this light, this candle here, it represents the source of our hope. It represents the champion of our peace. It represents the reason for our joy, and it represents the giver of love. Would you stand all over this place as our worship team begins to come back up? We're gonna sing another song. We're gonna bring the lights down in just a moment. All of you were handed a candle, a battery-operated candle when you walked in this afternoon. Would you take that candle and would you get ready, just hold it in just a few moments. We're going to light this candle at the end of this song. Actually, let's just do it right now. Take that candle, turn it to the right. You got it? Turn it to the right, it's the top of the candle. And as we begin to sing this song, would you just begin to hold that candle up high? Now listen. You may be listening online this afternoon or maybe you're here and you couldn't say amen to having confessed Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. I wanna pray a real simple prayer before we sing this song. And this morning or this afternoon, maybe you've been putting it off for a really, really long time, but you know you need forgiveness of your sin. You're tired of carrying that weight around with you. You've been waiting for far too long, but you know that God brought you here on a divine purpose this afternoon. And that's to receive a gift that you could never receive from anyone of earthly origin. You can only receive this gift from your Father in heaven. It's his son, Jesus Christ. And through what he did for us on the cross, he died for us, he shed his blood. Through the blood that he shed on the cross, he cleanses us and he washes us as white as snow, the Bible says. The blood-stained garments of Jesus Christ, which all we see is red, but when we're covered in the blood of Jesus, all God sees is purity represented by white. Our souls that were dirty become white before God. Through the cleansing power of the blood, of Jesus Christ. You can't do anything to earn this, my friend. You can only receive it by faith. So I'm gonna pray a simple prayer and there's no magic in this prayer. But if this is you, you know you need Jesus to forgive you of your sin. I'm gonna ask you to pray this prayer with me. All of us can pray the prayer, but especially you, pray this prayer with me this afternoon and receive the free gift of God that is Jesus Christ, the Son and let him begin that relationship, that restorative relationship with God. And after this service, before you rush out, would you please just come up or meet me at the door and just let me know, Pastor Tim, I prayed this prayer for the very first time and I would love to congratulate you. I've got a gift for you and I wanna connect with you here in the next few weeks. Pray this prayer, all of us together with me. Dear Lord God, as we come to this Christmas Eve, as we have prepared our hearts to celebrate the birth of your son, Jesus Christ. Father, this evening, I wanna confess that I'm a sinner and I've waited way too long. But tonight, I surrender and I give you my heart. I give you my mind. 
I give you my life and I receive by faith this gift of your son. And I ask that you would forgive me, Father, of all of my sin in Jesus' name. And everyone said, gathered to celebrate, Lord God, this, Lord, life-changing moment, the birth of your son, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that, Lord, everyone in this place and those listening online and all around the world, that, Father, that, Lord, everyone would have the chance to hear the good news. And, Father, I pray that, Lord, for those in this room who possess it, I pray your blessing. I pray your power. I pray the reality, Lord God, of your hope, your peace, your joy, and your love would be evident in their hearts and homes tomorrow morning, Father God. I pray that they would recognize, Lord, that this gift that you have given them, the gift of salvation, the gift of the forgiveness of their sins was meant to be shared, Lord God, to as many as they could ever tell. So Father, I pray that, Lord, in these upcoming days and year, that, Father God, our life would be set apart for your purposes and your glory. Father, we thank you for this gift that you have given to us. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, on behalf of Liberty Church, all of our pastors, our board, and all of our staff and team and ministry directors, we would like to wish you a very 